A very common thing to do with the mouse is use it to select an object on the screen and then drag it around. This is really easy to do in a basic way, but there's a little nuance that can make it much nicer, and I'd like to show it to you. Let's begin with the basic idea. Suppose that we have an ellipse that we're drawing somewhere on the screen. I'll say that its center x and y are saved in these global variables, center x and center y, and its diameter is d. So this line would appear somewhere in our draw routine, and it would draw this ellipse. Here, I'm also drawing the center of the ellipse as a little black dot so we can see it. Now suppose we want to drag this around on the screen with our mouse. So we click our mouse somewhere, and now as we move the mouse, we want the circle to move with us. So how might we do this? A good place to start, as always, is with mouse pressed. So let's write that, and I'll make it very simple. It calls another routine called follow mouse, and all that follow mouse does is it sets the current mouse x and y to the ellipses center x and center y. The advantage of doing it this way is that I can now write mouse dragged, and it's very simple. It too just calls follow mouse. So every time the mouse moves, we just set the center of the ellipse to the value of the mouse. So what happens the first time when we click the mouse? That is what happens. The center of the ellipse jumps suddenly to the location of the mouse. And now, as we move the mouse around, the circle moves with us. But that initial jump is really not very pleasant. Let's see it in running code. This sketch is running exactly the code that we just saw. So I'll take my mouse and I'll move it close to the center of the circle, but let's say I only get this close, and now I click. Bam! The circle jumps to the location of the mouse. Now as I move my mouse around, the circle follows me. I'll let go of the mouse. I'll move. Now let's suppose I go somewhere else, I do other things, and oh, I want to move the circle again. So I move my mouse back over the circle, but I don't get exactly at the center. I click, and it jumps and now it follows me again. That jumping, it's not great. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not great. Let's see how we can get rid of it. It's really very easy, and it's one of those little fit and polish things that makes a program feel so much nicer to use. The trick is to note that when we click the mouse, what we really care about is the relative motion. For example, if I move my mouse 10 pixels to the left, I want the circle to move 10 pixels to the left. We can track this relative motion with our old friend, the arrow. I will save this red arrow, the relative distance between the mouse and the center of the circle, and now I can add this to the location of the mouse. That gives me the center of the circle. To find this arrow, I'll open up mouse pressed and compute two new floating point variables, offset x and offset y, and they are just this arrow. Offset x is just the center x of the ellipse minus the current x location of the mouse, and offset y is the same. In this slide, I'll assume that I've declared offset x and offset y near the top of the program as variables of type float, even though I'm not showing it. Now let's use these. Take a look at follow mouse at the bottom. I'll open this up and just add the offset x and offset y back to the center when I compute it. Now, when I move the mouse, because I'm always adding this red arrow, the ellipse is moving with me, but it's maintaining its relative distance from the mouse. The real bottom line is it just means that the circle doesn't jump when we first click on it. Let's see this in action. Here's a program running the code we just saw. So I'll take my mouse and I'll move it near the center, but not quite, click down, and now drag. And notice that the circle didn't jump, and it's following my mouse. Now I'll let go, I'll go somewhere else, I'll do other things, I'll come back, I want to move the circle again, so I'll click here and drag. And the circle follows me. This is the kind of behavior that most people expect from a program, and it wasn't that hard to put in. So to recap, anytime we want to drag an object, but not have it suddenly jump when we first select it. We only need to find the distance between the center and the current location of the mouse, and then add that back in as the mouse moves around. These two little changes to the recipe are all it takes to make selecting and dragging objects 
just that much more pleasant.